New polling conducted after the conclusion of the Mueller investigation shows 47% of voters do not think Congress should hold impeachment hearings. 33% say continue investigating. 16% say start hearings now. Let's bring in Robert Driscoll. He's a former DOJ official who served as Deputy Assistant Attorney General. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for having me, Ethel. Okay, so listen, considering how the Mueller report has been politicized, can you, Bob, assure the American public that when Attorney General Barr releases a more complete version, that there won't be a political bend to the editing? Well, I mean, I, I have confidence that it will be, he'll play it straight. I mean, this is a, a attorney general who has amazing reputation for integrity. He's already been attorney general in his life. He's held various high-level jobs. He's not doing this to burnish his reputation. This is true public service. Everyone's thought very highly of him all along, and I think the fact that people are critical of him now just shows how political it's gotten. I mean, I think there's he's up there with, with people you would have the most faith in um, to follow the law, and that's what he's doing is he's protecting uh, grand jury information and other things that are, you know, legal principles. Not um, It's not just him deciding what's going to get out and not get out. It's him applying statutory and legal standards to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that same Wall Street Journal NBC poll also finds that the level of doubt in Mr. Trump's presidency as a result of the investigation has dissipated. And I want to take a look a bit uh, more from that poll that's saying that many said uh, regarding Attorney General's letter to Congress last week does not completely vindicate the president despite Mr. Trump's assertions that right. it amounted to, quote, total exoneration. And here are the numbers. Some 40 percent of Americans said it did not not clear Mr. Trump, while 29 percent say it did, some 31 percent saying they were unsure. So, Bob, what, what level of redaction will relieve skepticism and what level of redaction will fuel the flames of doubt and distrust? Well, I think things are so partisan, there'll, there'll be complaints if, you know, two words are redacted. They'll, uh, people will argue that the, the keys to the kingdom have somehow been withheld. I think the reality is that, that it, what's more important than the redactions are Mueller's conclusions, that whatever criticisms people may have had at Mueller, of Mueller at some point, um, and he may have been held up by, as a god by, by some Democrats, the reality is he's the closest thing we have to an impartial person in this. And once he's concluded that there was no collusion, I just don't see any chance that any kind of partisan investigation on, in either House of Congress is going to sway public opinion much. I think clearly the president's enemies will remain the president's enemies, um, but I think the, for the people in the middle, um, I think that that conclusion is what's really going to matter. And, you know, I think that it will only be so much noise to the public as to whether or not, you know, 6E material is, is somehow redacted or, or other kinds of things. So long as the basic conclusions are there and what it's based on, I think most people will take that at face value and move on. Should we hear public testimony and explanation from special counsel Mueller? Um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't bother me any. I think there's some precedent for that happening. I think certainly Attorney General Barr has already offered himself to testify at some point. Um, you know, the, the, the testimony is never the problem. The problem is the scope of the testimony. Uh, because again, uh, the, the problems are still there and that certain information needs to be protected um, for various legal reasons that are important legal reasons. And so I don't think, you know, uh, anyone would have an objection to um, uh, Special Counsel Mueller uh, or the Attorney General testifying. The question will be what is the scope of that testimony? And if people inquire into secret grand jury information or otherwise, you know, classified sources, sources and methods for intelligence, um, then I think that's going to create, you know, a, a fight. But I think that certainly, you know, transparency as a general rule is the right thing to do, and I think that everyone's trying to achieve that. There seems to be a lot of preemptive outrage when no one's seen yet what's happened, um, and I presume that in good faith, uh, Attorney General Barr is going to work through things, get his report out in two weeks, which is not an unreasonable amount of time to go through redactions on a report of that size and underlying documents, and then everyone can, can you know, have a fight then if they feel like they need to. But I feel like a lot of this is awfully premature. People are jumping the gun, assuming he's going to do something nefarious, where there's just no evidence he would behave in that way thus far. Is there a systemic problem of corruption in the Department of Justice and the FBI? Um, I think it's hard to, it's hard to judge. Um, certainly some pretty unsavory facts came out during the course of all this in terms of some of the conduct of people immediately before and immediately after the election. Um, that it certainly appears to the public 
or to a large chunk of the public, like things were, were politicized. And um, I mean, everyone credited Mueller with keeping his leaks to a minimum. You know, I suggest that, that um, Inspector General Horowitz and John Huber, the U.S. attorney who's overseeing um, some of the investigations into that, also haven't leaked anything. And so I think that stuff is being looked into by the department at, at certain levels. And I think at some point we'll get a better answer on it. But I think that clearly this whole fiasco has been uh, a bit of a reputational hit to the department. And I think that, you know, it's not... Unfair? Not, not, um, no, I mean, I, I think that, you know, th these kind of things, uh, you know, people still forget that, you know, texts and emails live forever. And some of the things people said are pretty unforgivable. I mean, they can argue they didn't mean them or they're joking or it didn't affect what they, what they did. But, I mean, when you have complete partisan... Um, statements and talking points coming from people who are supposed to be impartially investigating, that shakes people's confidence. Even right, if but I was asking you, person... Bob, because you, you, you work there, and I just wanted yep. to know if you felt, if you wanted to let the public know, say, yes, they may, there may have been some bad actors, if that's right. what you feel, but overall well, certain, you certainly can the trust vast, the... Yeah, I mean, what we're talking about is a very thin layer of top leadership people that were involved in these kind of things. I mean, most cases are apolitical. And FBI agents do a fabulous job. I, you know, I work with them in my cases all the time, and they're, they're highly educated, most of them nonpartisan. They're professionals. They want nothing more than just put bad guys in jail, and that's what they want to do. Same thing with line prosecutors, DOJ. The vast majority are top notch professionals who are doing, engaged in public service. And so I think the real question is addressing you know, the, that thin layer at the top where there clearly uh, appeared to have been some kind of problem just before and just after the election and hoping that the department can kind of regain its footing after that's taken care of. And if the department takes care of it itself through an IG report and through their own actions, I think that will give people confidence. I have a final question. It's about Russia. Do you fear that Russia will interfere in our 2020 presidential race? And if so, in what ways might they be successful? Um, it, it's hard to say. I mean, looking at the Mueller report, there are certain conclusions that there was attempted interference in certain aspects of the election. Um, you know, some Facebook postings and other, other things were being managed by Russia. And so I think that hopefully uh, DHS and other agencies are taking the appropriate steps to protect things. I think that, you know, uh, the fear I, I, I fear is that, you know, generals are always fighting the last war. And I think if people are looking at, at, at Russia, um, people should also not leave out other countries as well right. that may, may, may learn from the last election and think they can have an influence as well. So I think all election integrity issues need to be taken seriously. And I think the Mueller report, um, the, the non-controversial parts of it, should be a, a good basis for people, law enforcement to do that. Absolutely. Okay, Bob Driscoll, thank you very much for joining us here on this Sunday. Thanks for having me.